In this video, we'll learn how to create a full screen responsive landing page using HTML5 and CSS3. So let's take a look at it here on my computer. On the right hand side, we have the mobile version. And as you can see, when we hover over the take action button, it's gonna turn into a lighter color for us. And then when we scroll up, we'll find that no matter how wide or narrow uh, the, the page gets or your mobile device is, the image in the background is always going to take up 100% of the height and 100% of the width. So let's take a quick look here on the desktop version and then I'm going to show you how the responsiveness takes place. So at 768 pixel width, the conquer text as well as the take action button are going to change its size to fit to desktops from the mobile version or to the mobile version from desktops. All right, so let me go ahead and size this back down and then we'll get started with two simple files. So the only thing that you'll need to start this is a simple text editor and then your web browser. So the text editor that I'm using for both files here is called Sublime Text. So let me just show you Sublime Text, which is right here. So once you download Sublime Text or any text editor, just create an index.html and style.css document. And then I'm also going to have index.html open in my web browser, which is Google Chrome. So let me go ahead and move this out of the way, and then I'll open up Sublime Text. And as you can see, I just have the letter A here to show you that I have it connected to Google Chrome with index.html open. All right, so let me just delete this A, and then we can get started with the basics of our HTML document. So I'll just type out HTML and then press enter. And I'm going to call this full screen landing page. Also in the head section here, we're going to link index.html to our style sheet. So I'll just type link, press enter, and then add style.css. Now we can drop down to the body section here of our HTML document and get started with our first tag which will lay out the landing page. So it's going to span the entire page here when we're looking at the image and we're going to call it section class intro and then I'll just drop down and close out the section tag and then inside of section class intro we're going to have a div class and we're going to call this div class inner. Okay, and then close out the div. Then inside of that, we're going to have a content class. So both the intro and inner will span the full page for the image. And then inside of our div class content is where we're going to have the text and the button. So go ahead and add that class. And then we'll create an h1 tag for our conquer text here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in there with all caps. And then next we can add our button, which is the take action button right here. So I'm just going to write an A class and I'm going to call it BTN for button and then href for the link. And I'm just going to do a hashtag because I'm not going to send us anywhere for now, but you can put your URL here in if you want to have the button go to a different page. And then I'll just write the take action text and then close out the A tag or the link tag. So now, last but not least, at least for the HTML, will be the paragraph text. And there we have our conquer heading one text and the take action link which later will turn into the button. So I'm just going to copy the paragraph text here which is just simple uh, dummy text and paste it in here. And then I'll just copy the paragraph um, that we've added and paste it twice just to take up some space at the bottom of the page. Alright, so then I'm going to go ahead and save it and if we go back there we have all of our HTML content laid out for us. So the rest um, and all of the styling, including the image, will be done in our style.css document. So let's go over to that and get started. I'm just going to create a little bit of uh, space here. 
And the first thing that we're going to start with is going to be our Google font. So this conquer text as well as the take action text are special Google fonts. If you want to search for your own Google fonts, just do a simple Google search for fonts. And I'm going to show you how to import a font here. So just write at import URL, then in parentheses and a single quote, HTTPS fonts.googleapis.com slash CSS question mark family. And the first one that we're going to have is called Lato. And then the second one is called Muley. And for Muley, we're going to have it at a bold font, which is a weight of 700 as opposed to 4 or 500 for a normal weight or thickness for a font. So next, let's add a style to do away with any inherent margin and or padding that the web browser, Google Chrome, wants to put onto our document. So we'll reference the HTML document itself or the web browser and then the body of our HTML document and just say margin 0, padding 0, height 100%, width 100%. And now if we go back and refresh the page you'll see that our text will line up perfectly with the very left of the web browser there. The next thing that we'll reference will be our intro class. So just write dot for class intro as opposed to the hashtag for IDs. And we'll give this a height and width of 100% and then margin auto. And now we can add our background image. So write background URL and the link is h https www.macintuts.com slash wp-content slash uploads slash bw-mountains.png and then we'll also add no-repeat 50%, 50%. Okay, and now I'm going to skip down to the next line. And if we take a look here, there we have our image showing up. But we want uh, more of the image to show here. So let's write background size cover. So the image covers that section there. So now we can see much more of the image. And then we'll write top zero. And in order to do away with the space at the top, we'll also just add display table. And then we'll take a look at the version we're working on here in Google Chrome. So if we refresh, now we have our image taking up 100% of the width and height. So now we can drop down and continue styling with our div class inner. So we're going to reference that with dot intro and dot inner. And we're going to move our content to the middle of the page. So just write display table dash cell vertical align middle width 100%, max width none, and then let's take a look at it here. Okay, so now it's in the middle, starting in the middle, but we want it to be a little higher. So let's add some padding to the bottom here of our inner class. So just write padding dash bottom and we'll do 20%. Okay, so now if we go back and refresh, there we have it starting a little higher on the page. Okay, so next we can move down to the div class content. So reference that with dot content. 
and we'll give it a max width of 500 pixels and you can change this if you have more text and then margin auto and so now it's going to be sort of in the center but we just want the text to align center rather than on the left okay so now if we refresh there we have our heading one and the link centered for us so now we can move on to styling the heading one text here and then we'll do the button so I'll reference the heading one with dot content h1 and we're gonna give it that Google font family that's called Lato or Lato and then our fallback font is sans serif so comma sans serif and then we'll give it a gray color and that hex value is hashtag or pound five seven five seven five seven and then we'll give it a font size of 600 percent so that's going to be about six times um, 16 pixels which is the regular size font for Google Chrome and then we'll give it a text shadow of three pixels three pixels and then the white color or FFF so now if you look closely it has a bit of a border on the bottom right or bottom and right okay so now let's drop down and reference the button here so that's class BTN so right dot BTN or period deep BTN and then we'll give it a font size of 170 percent and then we'll use the other Google font which is Muli or Muli and then our fallback font again will be sans serif and if we take a look at it here now it's a little bit bigger so let's do away with the underline and then we'll change the color so text decoration none to do away with the underline and then the color is going to be the same as the heading one text the gray color which is five seven five seven five seven and then we'll also give it a border for the button feel so border two pixels solid five seven five seven five seven alright so now we have a border but we want to create some space between the text and our border so we'll give it a padding of eight pixels top bottom 16 pixels left right and then also let's give it a border radius so the corners aren't completely square give it a border radius of two pixels okay so now it's looking pretty good and pretty similar to the original here in fact we can't tell when we navigate back and forth unless we hover over it so let's go ahead and add our hover style to the button so we'll just make the color a little bit lighter here with the hex value of 898989 and that's sort of a light gray and then we'll also change the uh, the border color so the just the color style there is for the text itself and then we have the border color changing as well so now let's go ahead and hover over it and it turns into a bit of a lighter gray shade so the next thing that we'll do is let's just drop down to our paragraph text and make our paragraph text uh, bigger so it fills out more space at the bottom of the page here so for our paragraph text we'll just use regular sans serif uh, font family and then we'll give it a font size of 120 percent and then we'll create some space between the lines so 
line height 190%, text align justify to give it the straight up and down newspaper feel, and then a margin of 3% to separate it from the sides, and there we have our paragraph text looking much sleeker and cleaner for our full screen landing page. So now our our uh, desktop version for the landing page is complete but if we size it down we'll find that the text and button are much too big and the original has already resized for us at this width so let's go ahead and add a media query for the responsiveness of it with at media screen and max dash width 768 pixels and then open and close your swirly brackets and we'll reference the heading one with the content class h1 and let's change the font size to 300 percent which is about half the size of the original and now let's reference the button as well changing the font size to 110 percent from 170 and if we refresh it's looking quite like the original, just there's a little bit more padding. So I'll take away a little padding with 6 pixels, top, bottom, 14, left, right. And that's pretty close to the original here. And then let's change the paragraph text and just make it a little smaller. So we'll go font size 100% and then line height 160%. So that's all of our CSS as well as the HTML. I'm going to go ahead and size this back up so we can take a look at the um, text and the button changing size here as I span it across the whole screen. And I'm also going to pull up the mobile version. Okay, so that does it. I want to thank you for watching. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.